welcome back to my channel sports fans okay let's talk about this one right here top three greatest nba players of all time top three greatest players of all time and you can slice it how you want to slice it um that's if you agree with me if you don't agree with me I don't know what to say. I don't know what criteria you would go on. I'm going to tell you the criteria that that you can only go on. I don't know what they've been telling you in the sports media as far as ESPN and Fox. That makes zero sense what they're trying to tell you. But we're, we're going to tell you the criteria. And I've told you that this in the past. You cannot deny these guys are top three. Now, if, if you want to change them around, that's fine with me. But. These are my top three. I'm saying if you want to change these guys around, that's fine. But you can't use college. You can't use high school or nothing like that. Because like I said in the past, in college, you're playing the best of the high school players. In high school, you're playing the best of who? People trying out for the team. So in the NBA, you're playing the best of college players. The best of the best in the world that made the NBA. So... Let's look at the criteria right here. Championships, finals MVPs, MVPs, and statistical titles, and one more award, Defensive Player of the Year. You can't have no other criteria. Championships, finals MVPs, MVPs, and statistical titles, and Defensive Player of the Year. There's no other. Tell me. Tell me, <laughs> you can't really. I mean, longevity stats don't count in this. You know, they're great, but they're not a peak stat. They're accomplishment, and there's zero awards for it, you know. And it's not, not, it's not something you do in a year, and you was the best in a year. You know what I'm saying? So, like Too Raw for Sports said one time, I think he said Robert Parrish has more rebounds than Dennis Robin. But are we going to say Robert Parrish is even a top, what, three to five rebounder of all time? Yes, a great rebounder. But no, I don't even think Robert Parrish has a, a, a rebound title. So this is what we're going to look at. When you add all these up together. These are the top three. When you add championships, finals, MVPs, MVP, scoring, uh, and statistical titles and defensive player of the year, Jordan is number one. Wilt is number two. Kareem is number three. Okay. So let's explain something real quick. Because for the LeBron fans, what they'll say is one thing and then another minute, they'll say another thing. Right. They'll say uh, Jordan six championships. That's a team accomplishment. Or they'll say uh, that Bill Russell has more. But when you look down here and you look at Wilt Chamberlain, he only has two championships and he lost four in the finals. He's two and four. OK, LeBron is four and six. Where, where does that get him? So even if we throw out championships. Okay, we don't use championships. Where is LeBron? Wilt Chamberlain is still on top. <laughs> he still has more statistical titles. And they didn't even have defensive player of the year or count blocks. And he still out hustles LeBron James. Has the same MVPs um, and more statistical titles, right? And Kareem does too, right? We throw out championships. Kareem still beats LeBron in statistical titles, in MVPs. So LeBron doesn't even have a case in this, right? And if you want to be serious, Bill Russell, if you put his statistical titles and his championships together, LeBron doesn't stand a chance. Even, <laughs> you know what's so crazy? Even though, no, you, you put was it Bill Russell's championships, MVPs, and statistical titles together, they still outweigh and beat LeBron in what he has. Championships, finals, MVPs, MVPs, and statistical titles. Bill Russell still comes out on top, and Magic comes out on top um, <clears throat> on top of LeBron, right? 
when you put all, all of uh, Magic Johnson's championships, finals MVPs, MVPs, and statistical titles together, they still outweigh LeBron James. I got a video on that. Go check it out um, if you haven't seen it. So where does LeBron come in number one or number two, especially on top of these guys right here? It's crazy. These guys are straight lying to your face. These guys are lying to your face. And like I said, it, it doesn't bother me if you want to put Wilt first. Because you, are we judging on an entire career, right? Or what What are we judging on? One minute, you say you can't use championships. Okay, let's go with who was the greatest on the floor as far as, you know, statistical titles. That tells you how much you hustle, how great you was on the floor. What Will Chamberlain was doing at his size was basically impossible. I impossible. It was basically impossible for him to do what he did at his size. And a lot of people trying to say, oh, man, he was just bigger than everybody else. You know how much energy you got to use to, uh, of course, they didn't count blocks, but he was leading the league in blocks, too, a lot of years. For you to lead the lead, league in blocks, rebounds, and, and uh, scoring all those years, and I know Bill Russell uh, maybe led it a few times, too, but still, even if you were second, <laughs> you know how much hustle you would have to put forth as some, you're that big. Right. And even when he didn't lead the league in blocks, he was leading the league in rebounds and scoring. And one year he led the league in what was it? Uh, rebounds and assist. No, nobody really talks about that. You led the league in assist and, you know, something else that needs to be said. You can't compare errors. Right. <laughs> you can't compare errors. All you can compare is what you did in your era. Right. All we can do is look at the the 60s, look at who was the greatest on the floor then, put him to the side. 70s, who was the greatest in that era, put him to the side. Um, 80s, who was the greatest in that era, put him to the side. 90s, put him to the side. 2000s, put him to the side. 2010s, put him to the side. 2020s, put him to the side. And all those guys that we put to the side that was great in our era, now you now you put them together and you see who was the greatest, right? You can't put uh, '90s competition against '60s competition. The game was different, the medicine was different. You got to see what that guy did in that era that made him the greatest in that era. That's all you can do. So when I pull Michael Jordan out out the '90s. Or out of his era period, or when he played from those years, uh, well, I mean, you can go a whole career, but mostly Jordan was the '90s or whatever like that. But for Jordan's career, it was mostly, I think, the '90s. So you got to pull Jordan out, you got to pull Kareem out, you got to pull, you know, Magic, you got to pull uh, Will out, all these type of guys, LeBron out of his what two tens or whatever like that, and you look at it and you say, let me look at the championships the finals mvps the mvps um the the statistical titles and maybe defensive player of the year right and let me see what they did in their career and lebron's career doesn't stack up to these guys <laughs> it just doesn't you can't it's a joke what are, what are you talking about his career doesn't stack up when you put his championships his finals mvps uh his MVPs and his statistical statistical titles, they do not stack up to these guys. Not Magic, not Russell, not Jordan, not Kareem, um, not Will, not none of these guys. They just don't stack up. Yes, I, I have him number six in front of Hakeem. And Hakeem is number seven. And a lot of people beat up on me because they say, oh, man, you can't put him in front of Kobe. You can't put him in front of uh, Hakeem or Larry Bird. Look, Larry Bird has no statistical titles. He was a great player. Um, 
but I have a criteria. Kobe was a great player, but there's a criteria about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think if Burr would have had some statistical titles, Duncan doesn't even have statistical titles. That's why I can't put him up there. Okay. And what it shows you is when you don't have any statistical titles, you might have had a lot of help. You know what I'm saying? You might have had a lot of help when you're not leading your own team. Um, or I wouldn't say team, but when you don't have any statistical titles, you wasn't that year, you wasn't the best at scoring, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks. We look at a guy like Dwight Howard, right? This guy has all kinds of statistical titles, right? He has the um he has defensive player of the year award, he has uh, blocks titles. He has rebound titles. You have a guy like Dennis Rodman. He has a lot of statistical titles. This blows LeBron away in statistical titles. And so does Dwight Howard. So to me, that means something more to me than what, I don't know what these guys are seeing. To me, that means hustle. That means you had to beat out so many guys um, that was trying to be the best in blocks, trying to be the best in steals, trying to be the best in points, rebounds, assists, in the whole league. And when I see guys have, you know, two and three and four and five and six, that really means something to me, too, because, you know, you was trying to be the best on the floor at those categories um, year after year after year after year. So I, I don't really know what the leagues, I mean, uh, the, the media criteria for greatest player of all time, but it doesn't add up to me. You say stats. I mean, LeBron still doesn't make it because when we look at his 27, 7, and 7, 27 points is, is, is good. But the seven rebounds for a guy at 6'9", 250, 270, depends on when the steroids kick in, allegedly, <laughs> it's horrible. It's horrible, right? Jason Kidd averaged seven rebounds a game, Michael Jordan six, I think Clyde seven. If I'm not mistaken, um, people like Charles Barkley, he averaged like 10. Uh, and he was like 6'4". Who is this? Carl Malone, 10. So it's not impressive. That's underwhelming to me. I don't know why his fans keep saying 27, 7, and 7. That, what is that stat line? What does that get you? How many <laughs> rebound titles? How many assist titles? How many... No rebound titles. One assist title in a bubble. One scoring title, I think, in 2008. What what does that get you? And then when you look at his regular season, 60-point games, I don't even think that exists, right? Maybe like zero or one. His 50-point games is very small. A few 40-point games, it's just like Jordan has like 173 and LeBron has like 73. No, it might be, what was it? Something like that. Or it was 143 to 43. I forget. But Will, he just he just has so many. Um, but I still can't put him above Michael Jordan. I just can't. I just can't. And some people be like, you know, Will was more dominant. I, I just can't. I mean, for Jordan, what he did as a guard, you got to think about it. Look at what he did in the 90s. All these guys needed big men. To win. Jordan didn't need any big man. Uh, the Lakers pretty much try to do it without a big man. Because I, I wouldn't consider like, well, great big man. Great to good. I mean, D-Box, he, he was skilled, but no. Eldon Campbell, he, he was okay, but no. So they try to do it really without any good big man in it blew up in their face. The Bulls beat them 4-1. And then, you know, you had the great big man in the 90s with Hakeem. Uh, was it Hakeem? Ewing? Morning? I forget this guy's name. Of course, Shaq. Oh, I'm going to have to come back to this one. But you, you had all these great big men in the 90s. And Jordan was winning. And as soon as Jordan left, what happened? The big man... They went to the NBA Finals. Hakeem won back-to-back. -back. Shaq went to the Finals, right? Jordan comes back, and yes, he lost that season with like 18 games. But when he played a full season, Jordan won three again, right? 
swept Shaq, uh, swept Shaq the next season. A bit, uh, one of the greatest big men of all time. Uh, you can consider what Sean Kemp. What's his name? Uh, Carl Malone. These are these are big men. These are power forwards. These are big guys. They're not sinners, but they're, they're they're big men. So, and they had a big man lineup too. Uh, so Jordan, soon, soon as Jordan retired, what happened? The Twin Towers won, right? <laughs> and then Shaq won a three peat. So Jordan knocked out big men and he stopped them from winning. Once he could get, you know. His second greatest player on his team was not a big man. <laughs> it was Scottie Pippen. So, I mean, that, that's just crazy. You know, like I said, you need a Wilt. You need a uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You need a Russell. You need a, all these Moses Malone, all these big men in the 70s, 80s, 60s, and stuff like that to win championships. Michael Jordan won six championships with no big man. And he shut down the, I, I think, the greatest athletic big man era when we look at the 90s, right? I, I, I would think so. There's no other combination that was better than that. Hakeem, Ewing, M uh, Matumbo, Morning. You had Duncan in there. Uh, Robinson, you had all these type of guys like that. And you can throw in the power fours too. Th those great, Charles Barkley and Malone and um, what's his name? Ch -ch -ch -ch. Kemp, those guys like that. So these are the top three greatest players of all time to me. I don't think anybody can deny it. If you do, you basically don't know basketball and you, you need some help. <laughs> Nobody can, the, the, the numbers are there. There's, there's no other comparison to what these guys did on the floor. When you combine championships, finals, MVPs, MVPs, scoring titles, uh, steals titles, defensive player of the year. And another thing is people are going to say, oh, you know, well, well, they, they didn't have some of these awards when Bill Russell was playing. It is what it is. This is all we can do for now. Tell me what you think.